Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to do indexing in R. So more specifically, we're gonna be subsetting vectors in R. Uh, the reason we call these indexes, which you'll see here in a second, is that each value in the vector, so each element uh, is assigned a number since that the first one is gonna be one, the second value will be two, uh, and so forth through the list until the end of it, whatever the final number is. So today we're gonna to be talking about indexing but this is gonna be more or less subsetting vectors. And so let's just start off with our usual here. Let's just create some X. So create X such that X is going to be equal to um, some values here. So let's just make this, let's say six in total. Let's say four, eight, 12, 14, nine, and seven. And we'll run X and you'll see here when we print out X, X is four, eight, 12, 14, and nine. Okay, and now we're gonna do a subset of X and we're gonna choose what we keep. Okay, so let's say we want to keep, I don't know, the second and third portion of X, but nothing else. Uh, to do this, we would say, okay, Y, which is gonna be something else that we're gonna create, um, is gonna be X, so I want part of X. And then I need to create uh, the list of the index values I want, which I want two and three. And if you run this and you print Y, you'll see that we get eight and 12, which was our second and third value from X. Okay, and another way to do this is let's subset um, X, but this time we're gonna choose uh, what we drop. And to do this, uh, we use a negative sign. Okay, so in this example, we want to drop two values. Let's say we want to drop the first two values of X and we just want to keep the rest of it. Uh, the way we would do this is just do the exact same as above, but instead we'll use negatives. Um, so we do the vector here, and we're going to do negative one and negative two, and then we'll run this. And then we'll print Y, and you can see when we print this out here, we end up with 12, 14, nine, and seven. Again, this is very useful if you know you wanna drop, for example, the first ones, um, but you don't know the total length or you don't really care how long the rest of it is. Um, something else that we like to do is let's say we need to drop uh, the last value of a vector. Okay, so now we wanna drop the last value of some vector here. So let's say the vector is quite large. Um, we'll do this in a similar fashion, but instead we'll do negative and we'll do length of X. So this would drop the very last value. So in our case, X is gonna be sixth in length. And so negative six will drop the last one. Um, we should see from our list up here uh, that seven will drop, but we should have four, eight, 12, 14, and nine. And then we'll print that out. So let's copy this and paste it below and you'll see we have 4, 8, 12, 14, and 9 um, but we dropped our 7 which was the last value and now let's say we want to do the same so we want to um, drop the last value but instead we want to use a keep kind of format instead of a drop um, we can do the same thing here you do x and then you do 1 to length of x so this would be saying one to six. So there's six uh, values in here. Uh, and then you can do minus one. So this would take out the last one. So just say, just keep the first one to five in this case. But again, if you had a really long vector here, um, this would make it much easier than typing all of this out or trying to figure out what the number is for the length. And if we copy and paste this, you'll see again, we have four, eight, 12, 14, nine, and we are missing seven because we dropped it. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to mention just briefly is the colon operator here. Uh, so you saw in this example here, we have the colon operator, uh, but the colon operator, um, it's used to keep or to, I guess, to designate here. So used to define a range of values. Uh, so let's just say we have Z and we want to do X again, and we want to keep... Um, let's say values three, three to five, but you can't do three minus five, because it's a mathematical calculation. So you do three uh, colon five, and if you run this one and print it, then what ends up happening 
is you end up with three to five. So in our original X here, right, we end up with 12, 14, and nine. Uh, the colon operator is really useful because you can pick ranges of numbers. Um, I won't do exact examples here, but you'll see as you get programming, uh, it's very helpful to know this. Okay, and something else to note here, which is kind of special, is that uh, the colon operator will execute before a subtraction sign. So this is kind of the order of operations. And what I mean by this is let's do a loop function, but let's define this first. So uh, what I'm basically telling you is if you have uh, one to length, so some length of x, and you have minus one, uh, what this is really saying is that this is going to be uh, one to length of x, okay? And then this is all done first. So let's put parentheses around that. Then we minus one. Okay, and that's different than what you might expect. So you might be wanting uh, something such that it's going to be one, two, and then you want to do length of x, right, minus one. So you want to take the total length minus one and then do that full uh, kind of range here. Let's just go through an example. Okay, so the example we're going to use is 4i in 1 to length of x minus 1. And then we're just going to print out i, so as it iterates through the list, we just want to print the value. Okay, so before we run this, I'm just going to explain exactly what's going to happen, and then you can run it and just see that it works. Uh, but what we're saying is that we want to do in this case, so we know that, you know, x, so the length of x is going to be equal to 6. Um, so when we define this as 1 to length of x, it's going to be 1 to 6. Okay, and it's going to be this first. And then it's going to be minus 1. So what we'd expect this to be is it's going to start at 1. So it'd be 1 minus 1. So it'd be 1 minus 1 is going to be equal to 0. And then it would iterate up to the second value here, which would be 2. So 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. And then it will be, you know, dot, dot, dot. And then the final one we should see is it should execute this six times so that it's going to be 6 minus 1 is going to be equal to 5. So it should print out um, 0, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, if we were to run this, so let's just run this real quick. I'll show you. I'm not lying, you paste this below, and you run, and it prints 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just as I specified up here. So now let's take the same function, we'll copy and paste it down here, but instead I'm going to put the parentheses in so that it does this first. What this should actually give you in this case is that this should just be telling you that I want to do... Um, 1, 2, and then it should be 6 minus 1. So this is really just equal to 1 to 5. So this should give me, as it prints them out, uh, 1. And then the second run here should be equal to 2. And then as we go through all this, you should end up with a total of only 5 iterations in this case. So the last one should be equal to 5. Okay. So let's run this and show you it's one to five. You copy and paste and run it. Okay, so I was missing a parentheses here, but we'll copy this, paste this, and run it. And you see we have one, two, three, four, five. So you can see though the results are different. In this case, we're just saying go one and then to the total length minus one, where this one's actually saying go one to the total length and then subtract one from each value. Okay, so this makes a big difference in practice, but I just wanted to point that out that the colon operator will execute before a subtraction sign. Uh, it's just kind of a little caveat of how the order of operation works inside of R. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.